Hey guys, uh, this is Al again. So, um, I've had this car for probably, I don't know, more than 10 years now. And uh, really haven't done anything with it, as you can tell, I mean, it's just covered in dust. It was parked in that little corner over there. Uh, and we just had to pull it out. Doesn't run, obviously. Uh, using skates, kind of maneuvering it around the shop and finally getting it out. But it's a, it's a 73 Jensen Interceptor. I did a video on this car maybe a few months ago, uh, maybe close to a year ago, but it was a poorly lit, really badly made video because it was buried in that corner and there was no real light. So I, I thought I'd bring it back out here and uh, show you the car. Um, you know, like I said, it's a 73 Jensen. I bought it uh, from Oklahoma, so it was pretty close, close by. Uh, just found it for sale one day on the Craigslist, and I already had a Jensen. I had a blue one that's buried underneath all that crap over there. Um, but this one looked like a better candidate to restore. So I decided I, I wanted to uh, buy this one too, and I figured that I'd use two cars and make one nice car. Uh, Bodywork is okay. Uh, it does need a few trim pieces. You know, you can see the chrome over here is all banged up. But my other one has good chrome. And um, what else we got? Yeah, some, well, actually, no. I mean, it's, it's actually a pretty straight car. Um, there is a bit of rust underneath that rear cooler panel. So if you can see the lower balance underneath the, um, right here, there's a bunch of, that's all mud. So that needs to be rebuilt. And I'm gonna try my hand in welding with this car when I get going. Uh, the big issue with it, and this is how I bought the car, is that the heads are off. And they've been off for many, many years. So I've got no idea what kind of shape the, uh, the engine's in, uh, the block. But we're getting, it, we're getting ready to set it on the lift. And uh, we're going to basically pull the engine out and send it out to the machine shop. And they can tell us you know, what they think is wrong with it. Um, or if it's good, then you know, they'll just clean it up and give it back to us. Uh, it's got this really funky electric fan setup, which I think is factory. Um, I know that these cars had major cooling issues. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to go in with a set of spells and uh, just make sure that this, this deal kind of is done correctly. We'll probably upgrade the alternator at the same time. And uh, we've been going back and forth as to whether we wanna use um, fuel injection or stick with carburetors. I'm leaning towards carburetors. Vaughn's thinking fuel <laughs> injection. Uh, but you know, I'm thinking we want to get it running as quickly as possible before it gets really hot here, and it's going to get really hot. So, uh, you know, getting carburetors on it, I'm probably going to do a thousand miles max, you know, a year in it. So. This is how everything came in. So we've got the cylinder heads, the cam cover, the steering box. Yeah, AC compressor. AC compressor, holy cow, look at the side thing. AC compressor, um, all the head bolts, push rods, they're all in there. Um, I'll probably buy a set of heads. You know, there's a company called 440 Source that has um, all this good stuff for these cars, so all the you know for the Mopar uh, 440 engine, um, they sell aluminum heads, aluminium heads, all ready with valves and everything else in them. Um, so I may just go with those and just not worry about putting the heads on, and save me save me a little bit of hassle. I don't think it's going to cost that much difference. So aside from the rust that we have, you know, on the lower valance. Really, the other, only other piece of rust that we have is in that floor pan over there. And um, let me get my phone. Maybe you can see it better. 
right there. So it's not really too bad, really, because it's a really flat piece of floor. You know, I, I think I can weld it up pretty easily. But that's really about it. And everything else, the interior is obviously shot. Um, I think everything's there. The door panel I can see in the, uh, in the, uh, on the back seat. But it's shredded. So my, uh, my yeah, upholstery... That headliner's part. pretty nice. Headliner's pretty nice. <laughs> There's another headliner as well. Um, but, you know, all this stuff, this chrome, everything around here needs... Uh, is, is in the tr it looks like it's in the uh, in the back of the car. So yeah, so what we're doing right now is we're going to put the car on the lift. We're going to see if we can pull the block out. Um, the hood opens like this, and it's a one-piece clip. So I'm guessing we can take the hood off and maybe use that chain hoist over there. You know, put, bring the bring the car forward and use this chain hoist to lift everything up and then we should be ready to go so i'm excited about this project we were talking about what car we wanted to fix next and for some reason you know i've decided 2021 i'm going to get this car right and um, mechanically i don't think it's going to be a huge endeavor because it is a 440 engine everything mechanically is available we can uh, probably find brackets for a modern AC compressor, we can probably find brackets for a modern uh, alternator and uh, you know actually turn it into a driving car pretty quickly. It's not going to be a pretty car but it's going to be a driving car. Um, and uh, I'd be very happy with it because I've been sitting on this car for, uh, for about 10 years and if I can get rid of this, if I can get this car going and running then I'll feel comfortable about selling the other one because I don't really need to, but I've held on to both of them because I know I need to make one good car out of the two. So I'm going to try to hold on to this one for as long as I think I may need parts for this car. But that's about it. That's about all the update that I have for you right now. We're just going to go push it onto the, uh, onto the lift. You, uh, it's all wrapped up. Good to go. Okay. Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we hold that on. A work light? Hold on to this work light. Yeah, exactly. What the? Heck? I, th I think it's part of the. Uh, I think it's part of the car. It goes all the way up there. Yep. What is that? So it's a work light. No. I'm serious. That's. A... Really? Yeah. That's probably why the heads are off. It was probably a battery goes, drain. That's a long work light. Well, it doesn't drink. look like the subframe drops. It's just kind of its own deal. Yeah. I do think you need new lower control arm bushing. Oh, you think? Oh, uh, steering racks, racks leaking. Who knows? That might be a slow seep. So the engine definitely has to come out. Oh, you got a color-coded wiring harness. Color-coded wiring harness? Uh -huh. Oh, somebody's done some fancy And spare body. tire. Nice. Where's that, where's that little oh. chair that Haley sits on? Is this a block heater? Me? Uh, you sit there. I mean, you... I need to I'll to sit down. That way, the lights. That looks like a really big transmission. Yeah. This is that three-speed 727, which is quite a monstrosity, to be honest with you. Look at the, how, how far the tail goes back. A very wide transmission pan. Get on this side, Vaughn, so that you're not, that, yeah, you're shining the light at the camera. And it's got those, look at those tubes, like part of the chassis. Those big round tubes, yeah. It's kind of interesting, interesting setup. Is it U-joints? Is 
Yeah, like a kick down switch or something? Maybe. No. Or reverse, maybe. Oh, hey, uh, shifter? Or parking brake? Parking brake switch. Parking brake? Yeah. Okay. So I guess this this cross member unbolts to drop the transmission. Really? Where is it unbolt? Oh, it unbolts here. from. It's just it's got undercoating on it. Right. But okay. So are we going to need to drop the transmission before we pull the engine, right? Unless it can come straight out the front. There's no way. Like we could lift this up, but. And that subframe definitely isn't. The front of the anywhere. car doesn't look easy to unbolt. The engine sits really low. Yeah. So even if it did come out. Yeah. Actually, no, none of this looks like it unbolts. No. No, I think the transmission needs the transmission to be separate. And the engine can come yeah. straight up in there. Where the transmission mount or engine mounts are right here already. It looks like one is already unbolted. The, like kind of the GM style where the bolts go in from front to back. Uh huh. I don't think it'll be too bad. It's got like a remote oil filter set up as well. Uh -huh. It's got like this adapter on it. Yep, and it looks like the transmission bolts from the engine side. Maybe. So you have to climb in? Oh, never mind. Some of them are standard. Okay. Not, not a very big bell housing either. Well, floor pan actually looks surprisingly good. For the most part, I think the only piece of rust that we have is just that hole over there, which it that? could have just been like a water leak from the inside that yeah. pulled up. Yeah. Apart from that, the car's really solid. So the other the other car's from Florida, and it's it's actually in, in a more intact. But because it's in Florida, it's kind of a little bit more grotty with rust-wise. You know, Texas, I think Texas, Oklahoma is a little bit better. So, uh, all right. So there we have it. Thank you very much, guys. We, uh, we'll, get, we'll get going on this car. We'll give you an update as soon as we pull the engine. And uh, then we'll find the machine shop. All right, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.